home. She told me a lie. She don't remember why. She don't remember why. But she's going down. She caused the stir. Grocery store. Now she lost her shit in the canned food aisle. Uh, I don't think so. No, I um, you know, always talking to someone about you know writing a song, and it's just kind of cliche, but uh, songs just happen, you know. And I um, I write everything on, on guitar, so I um. It just seems to alternate between lyrics and or melody, so um, it's probably 50-50, you know. Um, I, I just come up with some, some words when I'm out and about, and I record them on my phone, go home and write a song, you know. And that's what I've always done, really. I, I can't just sit down and write a song. So I write songs in stages, and then uh, uh, they're, they're fragments that become songs. It's it's hard to say. I, you know, I, I I listened to I went through a huge phase, obviously, like a lot of people years ago, with Bob Dylan, and and uh, I now I put them on just from time to time to have that. It's like an old pair of jeans, you know. It's just a, a really nice, comfortable sound that takes me back to. Um, I think I was my older brother had it had on. You know, the times they were changing back when I was in my early teens, and I, I think from then on it was. I discovered Simon and Garfunkel and, and Dylan, and, and um, that's when I started writing on, on acoustic. You know, I, I, I was more electric at the time, and and um, in learning guitar, and so I, I went to acoustic and taught myself to finger pick, and um, I just became into the whole the idea of you know rhymes, trying to write words. You know, so I. I I don't try to emulate Dylan in any way, but you know he is an influence on the way I, you know, approach a song from the beginning. You know, uh, they're all pretty recent, really. I, I would say in the last year, year, year and a half, they came together, and um, it's funny because I I don't normally do covers. I, I don't normally well, I'll, I play the odd cover, but. I don't record covers uh, very rarely, and whilst recording, or while we began this this project, um, I was just flipping around to the songs I had, albums I had at home, and and that's when Betty Lovett's song came up, and um, um, I thought that'd be a great thing to to, to have a version of. Let me down easy Though your love for me is gone Let me down easy Since you feel to stay is wrong I feel that everything is everything on this album sort of it's not a concept album but I, I think all eight songs do flow together really well and even topically it's um it's 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 a it's a steady thought one long story you know um and i was happy with with the song order you know i was presented a song order and i thought oh, that's pretty cool so um yeah that was good but yeah probably in the last year year and a half these songs yeah uh there wasn't uh, an intent to write uh, a, a theme um for all eight songs, but it, it when I when I look at them now, listening to it, because I really do feel this this album is is best listened to from song one to the end. Um, I don't think there's really any you know singles necessarily on it, but uh, I, I, it's not a bad thing. It's just kind of how I've put these together. Um, lyrically, it's a it's a journey of I think one person in in. Um, you know the ups and downs and the you know stories of life from being young all the way up to you know when you're older um, so you know you the crowd to me was was all of us and our journey 
you know, uh, and that's kind of what I think it's, it's, and that's what's happened, you know. I do. Yeah, I do. It's, uh, I gravitate to that, you know, moodiness. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Shannon and I have been playing together now for a couple of years, I guess. And um, um, back in the early, you know, when we just started playing, you know, what are you after? And, and um, you know, he taps into exactly what I'm after, which is color you know, atmosphere, um, telling another story with music. And that's what I, uh, th that's, that's my thing, you know, my, my guitar is just my instrument to, to get the song written. And, uh, you know, so the embellishment is what I'm, what I'm really into, you know, as much as the song itself. It's as important to me to have atmosphere and, and to attack that part of the song as it is the lyric. Um, so to me, it's 50 50. Um, I heard Thomas years ago at the Clifton Hill Acoustic Night, and I never quite understood it at the time. And then, fast forward about four years, he gave me a call and asked me to come and do a gig. And I went to the gig with him and a double bass player, and all of a sudden it made sense. It was like, this guy's kind of like Jeff Tweedy, kind of got his own way of painting pictures, and and that was it because it was really evocative for some of the stuff I was trying to do uh, musically. Uh, well, there yeah, there was no brief really. Um, we just uh, we came here, and and the way we did it, it was it was done over just a matter of a few days, and we just we'd come in, uh, we'd meet at the table, have coffee. And they'd say, you know, what song were you thinking? And, I, you know, at the beginning of this, I had probably, you know, 15 songs I wanted to do, but know that I probably wouldn't do all of them. So we'd sit there, I'd play a song. And, uh, you know, Shannon bring his acoustic, I'd have mine, and we'd just strum the song and talk about it for 15, 20 minutes, and we'd go start tracking. And that's, that's exactly how we did it. Yeah, so I think that's pretty cool. There was no pre-production. There was no there was no way to take the spark out of the song. There was no over tweaking. Um, and I, you know, I think that's why the the songs kind of flow the way they do. It was, uh, there's no over. Uh, there was no. Um, yeah, there was no uh, laboring, over laboring. You know, it was just it was a nice, beautiful experience. You know, so. With uh, you know, Ben and Shannon just, just uh, you know, put their you know, little thing on it, and uh, did a great job. Oh yeah. Well, I actually with this one I left it, so I didn't listen to any demos, and it was absolute blank slate. We mm. talked. Yeah. Did you have a brief? I don't. Um, I know that he was sort of looking, sort of, uh, kind of out there, I guess, with some of the stuff. Was trying to sort of break out of the folk type mm. of thing and I mean he would turn up with a song and some of the songs I'd already played at gigs but we'd just deconstruct them in the kitchen I guess yes and no I, you know you know we took it's hard to say I mean I, some of the Calexico sounds uh, that sort of 70s pop meets sort of, you know, moodiness, but to have an album that was, you know, what we referenced it by, um, you know, some of the, some of the Wilco sounds, I could say perhaps, um, but one album that we used as, as the reference, uh, I don't think so, it's just a, it's just a, a lot of influences, I think that we all three had, um, from retro to current to um, just to, to, to what it is that I do, you know, just kind of a hodgepodge of bit of this and that. There, there may have been some slight nods here or there. Oh, yeah, some... uh, it, was, it was really, for me, a sort of production role, it's just really what the song 
would suggest. You know, like, well, at the centre of everything is the song. It's the centre of everything is his voice, you know. We're painting around that. So, never wanted it to get go off into another territory where the song became something other than what it was meant to be. And you know, I know Thomas's stuff that he likes as well. He does like Nick Drake. I know he know he likes Neil Young. We yes. talked about Wilco and some yep. of the soundy things that go on there. But essentially, it was really organic. It was just make music that sounds good, that's three dimensional, yeah. interesting, that I would want to listen to. Yep. Yeah. It was a very natural flow from kitchen to take to yeah. treatment. Well, I used the Martin OM21 um, for the whole for the whole album. Um, it's a great medium body. Very happy with it. Um, it's got a great mid range. Um, so, I mean, I, I kept things very simple. You know, I was um, very very um, a nice tone. I've got a nice sunrise pickup in there. So, um, it was Shannon who had the. Uh, the efforts on laboring on the guitar decision making on what he used but uh yeah uh, one guitar one guitar pony i've got a <clears throat> i've sort of got a um there's a core of stuff i take when i go and do a record there's always a baritone there's always something big and hollow that's got flat wounds on it it's generally tuned down a tone as well um there was this little guitar it's downstairs there was this little guitar I bought in called Cuckoo that I bought, God, it must have been about 12 years ago. And it had just been sitting around in the case. And I bought it here and we pulled it out and it was like, there's the yeah. sound. There's the sound. You, know, you can have stuff laying around for years. Um, so, you know, it was a few acoustics, a couple of interesting electrics, and Ben's got great stuff as well. And the, with sort yeah. of a core amp sound that we did, would have, and um, yeah, we didn't deviate far from the amp no. selection. But guitars, it was just what color was needed. It may be Hammond, yeah, a cheesy little organ Shannon found on Hard Rubbish. Yeah, it's uh, can't give all the secrets away. No, no, you know, yeah. you just just picked a, a handful of instruments that have great character and make a record with them. And that yeah. gives a tonal continuity as well between each song. And we we, yeah. we didn't have, you know, guitars that had strings that were too new on them. As, no. As well, you know, so you lose all that harmonic content that's all you know, sheen and pristine. Yes. And we just have these, you know, you pick pick that one up off the wall yeah. over there. It's really thin slide sound. That was the right sound for the song. It wasn't about making a pristine guitar sound. It was about having a character yeah. in the song. You know. I think the strings on the Jazz Master were probably eight years old. Yeah. And then I went and changed them, so unfortunately. Tetanus shot. Yes. Every <laughs> time you every time you yeah. play. Yeah. I you know closer I don't know, I they're they're all pretty pretty special to me, you know. I, I was in I was in upstate New York a couple of years ago, and I came back and wrote a song. It's the last song on the album called "In Lock Sheldrake Under a Rambling Moon," and I, I think closest to my heart. But it was a real story while I was there, as far as you know, where I was in, mentally, uh, emotionally. So coming back, I eventually wrote that song, and it was just, you know, I, I think that might be a, a very special song for me. Um, um, but yeah, I have a song in there called Tether, which is a, an emotional song uh, based on a true story. Um, and, you know, that just kind of happened, you know, back very quickly um in writing that song and but i think i think sheldrake uh would probably be the, the most personal song for me on the album yeah <laughs>
it's the lake Somewhere upstate, Lok Shildrake Any, uh, they, they all found their own path, but any more is actually quite bare. It needed work. Yeah. We, we, we were coming down to... It was, it was coming down to it, to the record, having to get it done, and we were here doing yeah. some mix. It was in, like, when we were mixing. Yeah. That, that, it's like, man, that song, it just needs something else. It needs something else. And it was raining out there. I remember we were sitting out one night, and it's like, what about that organ? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And we set it up, and we put a mic, and... I crunched through some things. You and can probably hear it click in. and Yeah. I mean, because, you know, I'll, <clears throat> I'll learn a part. I'll come up with a part. I don't play Hammond organ, but I will. I'll give it a go. And generally, if I've got a Hammond player, he'd probably play a bit more than the song needed as well. So that was one of those ones that just yeah. came together. When we put that on, <coughs> that was, the, that was the, the last element it needed, and it lifted it. Yeah, they they all kind of followed that path of the, we put drums on it and then we're like, oh, it needs bass. Yeah. Oh, hold up, it needs a hook now. And yeah. there's never much more thought than that, really. No, it was it's just it's really natural. natural. No, it, no, it was a bit, a bit less traditional in that approach. We kind of brought Garrett in for a day, and we were all sitting up here in the control room with our jaws on the floor, mm. almost in tears. And <clears throat> yeah, we brought them in on separate days, and yeah, yeah, yeah it was really amazing. Um, yeah, Danny McKenna, it's probably, it's it's funny when you play music. You know, you might send a Dropbox link to someone and say. Well, these are the songs. <laughs> I know so many guys that listen to the songs to the on the way to the studio in the car, and I think that's really slack. He would come in and go, "All right, well, I've gone over the songs, and I'm thinking this, and I'm thinking that," and he's come up with parts like he came with a slew of different drums and things. You know, um, he yep. just didn't. He wasn't lazy. He put time in. He's got a great player that has character. He has instruments that have character. And, you know, one of the songs he was like, oh, I've got an idea for a cymbal part and I'm going to just play it with my hands. It was, and it was just yeah. beautiful. You know, to th he would yeah. think of that. You see, a guy driving to the studio, listening to it, he's going to do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and he had to do it in reverse as well. It was essentially drums post all yeah. the music being done. No clicks completely quite a challenge yeah. really yep yep I, I always yeah always for me because I well yes and no not in a way that I was concerned about how it would end up but you know I, I think it's easy to overanalyze yourself you know so you have to force yourself to just let go and, and and fortunately, I had a couple of really good, really good guys. You know, mixing, finishing. So the, there was never a fear factor. It was just, you know, you listen and you pick, you pick constantly pick things. You know, um, if I listen to it today, I you know, it, it, it I'll still pick something, but um, it's a pretty fruitless exercise, really. I, I, I'm very happy with it, and, and I think it captured a moment, and I, I think I think it's I'm very proud of it. It's got it's got some really highs and lows that uh, I hope people um, will will appreciate and enjoy. Yeah, uh, the golden question. Uh, this was probably one of the quickest. What was the turnaround? 
Did we the do turnaround three, three on this days? record was crazy. Well, yeah, I, I spent quite a bit longer. Normally, like say that last Jeff Atchison record we did, we'd spent a lot of a lot of time honing in and getting persnickety, as Jeff would say. But yeah, it was it was quite quick. But um, it's a tough one to answer because I, I would always take more time. Men put hours in. Yeah, you know, I'd go home and you know. You knew Ben was up till about five in the morning doing this. Yes, yeah. I've, I've kind of already forgotten. At, at the time, it's the only thing that matters, and then time moves on and it's finished and you forget. But I'm sure at the time it was quite <laughs> involved and stressful. It was yeah. stressful. Well, in, in, in its seriousness. Well, it needed to be out. Yeah. It needed to be done by next X time. This so. is right, the magical deadline. Yeah. It's a tough question, that one, because yeah. you would always take more time and do it differently, and at some point you have to decide, well... That's done. Shannon and I have been mainly doing duo shows for the past couple of years, and uh, for the launch of full band. So um, a guy named Danny McKenna, who recorded with us on drums, and a guy named Dean Addison playing bass and Shannon so yeah it'll be nice to to hear the songs as is pretty much how they were recorded you know so I am very excited you know we played Port Ferry um, a few weeks back with um, uh, as a trio with the uh, cellist um, which was fantastic great run of shows but th this will be nice to have that that full band again you know um, really songs just open you know uh, so yeah I'm excited about it yeah again it's one of those albums it's like I'm removed from it enough now to actually have it on in the car and get to the end of the album and be happy for it to start again and start again I, I, I can yeah. listen to it over and over again it just it's that lovely I mean Thomas's voice is lovely and the songs are really great so and it's kind of yeah. once you've been so attached to it it's almost easier to enjoy it through other people so there's a bunch of people we always bounce stuff off and yeah. with me it's my sisters or my dad and I'll send send stuff through because you lose objectivity and mm. generally they'll always be like it's great it's done what are you talking about you can't hear that thing at the bar 72 that yeah. you're obsessed with yeah uh, to build to build it to um, I'd like to head up um Head up the coast and promote promote the album. Um, get as many people to hear it as possible. Um, I think people should hear it. So yeah, we'll see how we go. Working on a, a set of shows now. So stay tuned. Yeah. He's got great hair, Thomas. He does have great hair. <laughs> no. He's always he's always well presented. Yes. Um, he's one of the kindest people I I know. It was really lovely around yeah. Christmas time. We were doing a session, and he, he bought us a lovely loaf of bread and a bottle of olive oil each. You know, it's true. Really thoughtful gift. You know, he's a he just wants to make great music with the people he likes, and he doesn't care much about the scene and all the other bullshit that goes on. So, it's good to have someone like that in your life because it reminds you of what really matters, and the music is what matters, really. Yeah, 